socialism doesn't work and it's produced misery and suffering and poverty and death wherever it's been applied. You, you know what's striking, as you know, I do a podcast every, every week called Verdict with Ted Cruz. And, and the latest podcast, one of the things I talked about is the indications that, that the kids are running the place at the White House, that there are no adults in charge, that there's no principal. And, and when that was really driven home to me was Biden's State of the Union address. Listen, it's not rocket science that the Democrats are headed for an absolute disaster of an election in November. They know that. They know they're going to lose the House. They know there's a very good chance they lose the Senate. Any ordinary office holder, any adult, any president in that position would say, hey, let's change course. Maybe we can do something not to lose both houses of Congress. And what astonished me was the State of the Union. Joe Biden didn't even try. They made no attempt to move to the middle. You and I both remember Bill Clinton yep. masterfully changing course and avoiding electoral disaster for his party. And the fact that Biden didn't even try that, what that tells me is that he no longer has the mental acuity to be aware of what's going on. And it's the woke children, the staffers around him. Mm. And I've analogized them to, 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 to the guy with a cowboy hat at the end of Dr. Strangelove riding the bomb all the way down. <laughs> They're going to ride the socialist bomb right till it blows up on Election Day in November. I don't really know where to start with Ted Cruz. I mean, this is a guy whose views flip flop depending on who he's talking to. But to try this theory of pushing socialism as a bad thing, as a scary thing, as something to fear, that, you know, if you vote for Democrats, then they're going to turn America into a socialist country. I mean, it's just false. I mean, I'm British. I'm from a socialist country. We don't think of it as a socialist country. We just think of it as our home. It's run by a conservative government, but they're not going to get rid of the National Health Service. They're not going to get rid of the welfare state. I mean, these are things that make Britain great, and they are socialist constructs. If you can't work because you are infirm or because you are disabled or if you are just not smart enough to get a job, then the state will pay you to live. Not very much, but enough to get by. And if you are sick, you can walk into any hospital and they will treat you. And they'll just ask you your name and your date of birth, and you don't have to hand over a credit card or anything. You telling me that's bad? You telling me that's that's a worse system than what we have now, where you have to look on Yelp to find a decent doctor who isn't going to rip you off or rip you up even? America arguably is already a socialist country. I mean, you have a thing called Medicare and Medicaid. These are going to be around forever, and people, millions of people, rely on them. These are socialist constructs. Hey, you even have a thing called social security. And then think about the military for a second. I mean, the military budget is $800 billion a year to pay for arguably the finest military in the world. Donald Trump used to boast about having the greatest, the biggest, strongest military. So you're going to end up with thousands of people in the military paid for by the public purse who are not seeing active duty. And so they are paid to live and paid to train and to be educated and to be fed and to be looked after. Hmm. And socialism. No? So, you know, the idea that the socialism is the bogeyman, this is something that's been invented by Republicans to scare people into not voting for Democrats. And it has no basis in reality. You know, branding Bernie Sanders a radical socialist or even a Marxist, it's insane. I don't even think they know what socialism is. I don't think they know what Marxism is or even communism. I mean, Ron DeSantis is wanting to teach about the perils of communism in Florida schools now. I mean, there's just no intellectual argument. You know, you can't say these things and not think about having some kind of intellectual analysis or reasoning for it. You can't just say anything out loud, but that's what they seem to be doing, just saying anything out loud. It's fear-mongering. It's not based in truth. If you've travelled, if you've seen the world, if you've seen different countries that live in, under a socialist system, you'll see how beautiful it is. You'll see how everybody seems to be doing okay. You'll see how people don't think of it as the dreaded socialism. It's just their way of life. And it works. I mean, capitalism has hardly worked. Think about it. The cost of living. People can't afford to live in America. 
The cost of living has risen like this, and wages have stayed the same since, what, 30, 40 years. Is that, is that working? Is that system working? And the other thing is, it's not either or, you know, I, I'm from a, a, a socialist country run by a conservative government. We believe in capitalism, but we also recognize that you cherry pick the best bits of socialism and have them baked into your system. So it's not like America would suddenly stop being a capitalist country and would suddenly turn around to this socialist ideal. That's not what's going to happen. What you're talking about is, I mean, we're too far gone for a start. You know, the capitalist system is too far gone right around the world. We are a capitalist planet, fundamentally. But what we can do is we can have more respect for the people who cannot get on in this environment, who are not equipped to do these jobs, who are not able to keep up with a modern society in the way that it requires you to, who can't work 18 hours a day and boast about how little sleep they get. That's not the world that I want to live in. I want to live in a world where we share the wealth, where the people who are making so much money, like the refineries and the oil companies during this period where regular people can't afford gas. If you had a system that meant that those people couldn't make all that profit, then gas would be affordable. There's this constant contradiction from people like Ted Cruz, scaring people about the fundamental concept of socialism without really knowing what it means, and at the same time blaming Biden for the fact that gas prices are five or six dollars. You can't have it both ways. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the 5 Minute News podcast and on Sunday mornings on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.